What is up, YouTubes? Mountain Man Magic. We had an awesome time at our Guild's Ravnica pre-release. Now we get to look forward to drafting this amazing set. I'm very excited about that. So I'm gonna go through the best commons and uncommons to hopefully help you when you're drafting. Let's get into it. Guilds of Ravnica looks like an amazing set, and I can't wait to draft it. Keep in mind, if you start going down the 3 plus color path, that guild gates may need to be prioritized a little higher as the draft progresses, as they are great mana fixers. Also, if you pull off drafting a mono color or powerful 5 color fun stuff deck, I want to hear about it because that's especially impressive in this set. And now I'm going to go through the 3 best commons and uncommons for each color, as well as some honorable mentions, focusing on how the card strength, touching on the value they provide with each guild that uses that color, and ultimately, what's going to help us draft the best possible deck for the seat we're in. Let's jump right into white with an honorable mention for Healer's Hawk. The one white mana bird that's a 1-1 flying lifelinker is great because it's easily mentored, it's a really good legitimate one drop that will be hard to answer early, and lifelink is super valuable in those racing situations. Continuing on with the white commons, at number 3 I have Intrusive Pack Beast. For 4 and a white you get a 3-3 with Vigilance, and when it enters the battlefield you can tap up to 2 target creatures your opponents control. For Selesnya and Boros, this card is a solid play because it allows you to set up a great attack or alpha strike to close out the game. And Vigilance works really well with Convoke, and it being a 3-3 is a solid body in Limited. Number 2 we have Parhelion Patrol, for 3 and a white you get a 2-3 flyer that's also Vigilant, and it has Mentor. This is just a solid body, in the air, flying is a premium ability in limited, and the mentor helps with all the tokens we might be generating for Selesnya or the one power creatures across Boros and Selesnya. This is a really solid body that also helps answer any tokens or low power creatures in the air, as that 3 toughness is going to be fairly hard to get through early game. And the best white common, no surprise here, is Luminous Bonds, for 2 and a white enchanted creature can't attack or block. It's just a great semi removal spell that is again an amazing playable for any white deck and a first pickable card. Moving on to the white uncommons, in the number 3 spot we have Rock Charger, for 2 and a white you get a 1-3 flyer that when it attacks it gives another target attacking creature flying as well. With Mentor from Boros this can quickly get bigger all on its own and become a problem for your opponent as now your aggro strategy with Boros gets evasion or your Selesnya big bodies are flying in for the win. Even though this card was essentially a common as Pegasus Courser in the prior two sets, it's getting bumped to uncommon but it doesn't remove it from my radar as a great pickup for any white deck. In the number 2 spot we have Sunom Stalwart, for 1 and a white you get a 2-2 creature with First Strike that also has Mentor. First Strike is a problem for a lot of decks that want to trade early on against an aggressive deck. Stalwart doesn't allow that to happen though, and the fact that it can mentor our turn 1 plays or a card like Rock Charger, and the more you mentor the more you have on the board to keep going and pumping your creatures up, this card's just going to be able to provide a lot of value, and this is just all around a great card for either white deck to put in that 2 mana drop spot to help fill out the curve with powerful creatures. And the best white uncommon, we're going to go with Conclave Tribunal. I don't think this is any surprise either. For 3 and a white, you get to exile target non-land permanent your opponent controls until this card is removed. This is basically an upgraded Hieromancer's Cage, which in M19 was a very first pickable, strong removal spell for white. Now it has gotten an upgrade as Conclave Tribunal because you can now convoke it out. This is splashable, first pickable, and a fairly obvious best white uncommon. Now to the blue commons, we have an honorable mention for Passwall Adept. It's 1 in a blue for a 1-3 that reads, pay 2 in a blue, target creature cannot be blocked this turn. In some cases it may just stand in the way of tokens getting through, but in others it just wins you the game. In a grindier game you can now use this to get through lethal damage for potentially multiple creatures if you have the mana for it. And there's also an example I'm going to show at the end of this video where it can even save your board from certain destruction. In the number 3 spot we have Demir Informant which is kind of the set's omen speaker but this is for 2 and a blue you get a 1-4 that has Surveil 2 when it enters the battlefield. Surveilling is quite good in this format and it has way more synergies going for it than Scry ever has so this card should be on our list for best blue commons as Demir and Izzet will gladly play this in either deck. The number 2 spot I have Watcher in the Mist, for 3 and 2 blue you get a 3-4 flyer that surveils 2 when it enters the battlefield. The double blue makes it hard to splash, but the guild gates make this a great playable for any blue deck and it is still a very very good card as are most big body flyers in limited. Again surveilling has a lot of synergies with it, this card is just a great value card for multiple reasons in limited. In the number 1 spot I have Capture Sphere. For 3 and a blue, it's an enchantment with flash that taps enchanted creature and that enchanted creature does not untap. This is really good in this set because it stops convoking, it stops tap abilities that something like luminous bonds doesn't, and with flash it's basically an instant removal of a big threat on your opponent's side of the board. That's why I've got it in the number one spot, capture sphere. 
Next is our blue uncommons. I do have one honorable mention and that's Chemister's Insight. For three in a blue, it is an instant speed that says draw two cards. The fact that it's at instant speed is really nice because you can wait until your opponent's end step to play it while also keeping other spells in your hand up with mana available in case you do need to respond to something on the board. And I really like this card at jumpstart because you can play it as soon as possible to get more cards in your hand and then if you start to run out of gas, you can jumpstart it again. Instant draw cards are usually pretty powerful and limited, and this is no exception. In the number three spot, we have Murmuring Mystic. For three and a blue, you get a 1-5 that reads, Whenever you cast an instant or sorcery, create a 1-1 blue bird illusion token with flying. This is a bit of a build around card, and as a creature, it's really only good for blocking, but the fact that it adds value to every instant and sorcery in your deck, cantrips like Radical Idea and any card with Jumpstart are now instantly better, and it can also be your bomb when you attack with an army of 1-1 flyers for the win. Some are pretty high in this card, some are pretty low. Either way, I think it's really solid, a really fun card, and one I'm excited to play in draft. Number two, we have Night Veil Sprite. Night Veil Sprite is a 1-2 flyer for one and a blue, which is already solid value for limited, but every time it attacks, you also get to surveil one. There are a lot of solid combos for surveilling. Besides the fact that it will smooth out your draws every time you do get to attack with it, this is a solid creature, and it's also a card that Izzet and Demir will be happy to play in that number two spot for their mana curve, and that's why I've got it in the number two spot for our second best blue uncommon. And in our number one spot, I put City Watch Sphinx. For five and a blue, it's a 5-4 flyer. That's basically a bomb unlimited, so there's no way this doesn't get played in most blue decks and potentially even splashed in other decks struggling for a win condition. It also reads when it dies, you get to surveil too. So a huge flying body like this is going to be really strong and limited, and there's no exception here. I really like this card, and if it's not answered quickly, you just win the game. If it is answered quickly and destroyed, you get to surveil too, so you're hopefully getting the cards you need to win the game anyway. This is a really strong card, and that's why I put it in the number one spot. Next up is black, and our third best common. I probably have this as the most contentious pick thus far, but I'm putting Mephitic Vapors. For two and a black, at sorcery speed, all creatures get minus one, minus one until end of turn, and you get to surveil two. The reason I put this at number three over a lot of the solid creatures is this card, I think, has a far higher ceiling than those creatures. Demir's biggest weakness, as well as Golgari, is a deck that can go wide fast and outrace it. This card, even without the surveil, can save you from losing a game when it takes out multiple X1s or a board full of tokens. And Golgari will probably fare better with this card because even if you end up taking out one or two of your own creatures, you'll capitalize on that later with Undergrowth. Then you get to surveil too to help you make sure you're getting the cards you need. But in the context of this set and playing against decks like Boros and Selesnya, which are going to create a lot of tokens and have a lot of X1 creatures, I'm putting this as the third best black common. For number two, I think it's far less controversial, and that's Deadweight. It's an enchantment for one black mana that gives enchanted creature minus two, minus two, which in many instances will end up being a removal spell, and in others, it's a spell that says, I shrink your creature to where it no longer is a threat. K, bye, thanks for playing. And it says all that for just one black mana. That's great value, and that's why it's in the number two spot. And the best black common is Deadly Visit. For three and two black mana, you get to destroy target creature at sorcery speed and surveil two. For 5 mana, it's just a solid card for limited, and yes, you want to play as many copies as you can get, it is first pickable, and that's why it's the best black common. Moving on to the black uncommons, I have number 3, Crawl Swarm. We all know flying in limited is a premium ability, and this being a 4-1 flyer, it is a tad expensive for 4 and a black, but if your opponent removes it, you can pay 2 and a black, discard a creature card, and get it back in your hand. So, it is a solid reoccurring threat that is not easily dealt with, and can eventually win you the game. In the number two spot, we have Necrotic Wound. For one black mana, it uses Undergrowth to give target creature minus X minus X for each creature in your graveyard, and it does it at instant speed. I really like this card because it scales well into the mid and late game and answers indestructible nonsense, which there is some of in this set. Anytime you can have instant speed removal, especially for just one black mana, that's gonna be a pretty solid card, and I think Necrotic Wound fits that bill fairly well. Our best black uncommon is Price of Fame. For three and a black, you can instantly remove a creature, surveil two, and if the creature you target is a legendary creature, you only have to pay one in a black for this spell instead. This is easily one of the best removal spells in the set, and that's why it's landing in our number one best black uncommon spot. Continuing on, we have red commons, and I'm going to start with an honorable mention for Rubble Belt Boar. This is a 3-3 three, three body for three and a red, but when it enters the battlefield, target creature gets plus two plus zero until end of turn. And I mention this because for Boros, that plus two plus zero will help a creature continue to mentor other creatures and keep that value chain going for potentially a couple turns. That alone could be a reason to play this in your deck if you are really aggressive and trying to make sure that you get value from your mentor mechanic. 
Now in the number 3 spot I have Cosmetronic Wave. For 3 and a red you deal 1 damage to every creature your opponents control, and they can no longer block this turn. One thing to keep in mind is if you are behind on board or you can't swing for the win, this card may not provide any value. But if your opponents have a decent amount of X1s or you're able to swing for the win, well then this card will win you the game. And I think as a Boros card, even is it will be happy to play this, and it combos really well with those cards in Boros that give you extra attack phases or extra turns. The number 2 spot, I have Direct Current. For 1 and 2 red, it deals 2 damage to any target at sorcery speed. It also has Jumpstart. This card I was fairly low on when I first read it, but a card that is removal, that allows you to play it an additional time, to do more removing or shocking to the face is going to be valuable in limited, especially when it combos so well with the synergies that we see going on in Is It. Overall I think this is a solid red spell, thus I've currently got it at the second best red common. And the best red common I have, Command the Storm. It costs 4 in a red, it's an instant, and it deals 5 damage to target creature, which is basically removal for 95% of the creatures in this format. You can't really go wrong here, I wish it had jumpstart, but even still, I'm gonna go with it being the top red common. For red uncommons, in the number 3 spot, I have Inescapable Blaze. This is expensive at 4 and 2 red, but it is an instant, it's uncounterable, and it deals 6 damage to any target. Is it and Boros will both be happy to use this as their finisher? I mean, M19 had Lava Axe, which is 1 red less to cast, but could only deal 5 damage to a player, and that was a solid finisher for the aggro deck. This card is better for multiple reasons, even though it costs one more red mana, and that's why I have it as the number 3 best red uncommon. At the number 2 spot, I have Goblin Crater Maker. For 1 and a red, you get a 2-2 that also reads, pay 1 colorless, sacrifice it, you can then deal 2 damage to target creature, or you can destroy a colorless non-land permanent. That kind of flexibility is great and limited because you can remove smaller creatures, you could remove any size artifact creatures, or just pesky artifacts that are on the battlefield. And to no one's surprise, our number one best red uncommon is Lava Coil. It is only sorcery speed, but for one in a red, you deal four damage to target creature, which is quite good. Plus, if it kills that creature, it exiles it, which in this set cannot be understated, as it stops undergrowth from growing, any graveyard recursion shenanigans, and those are important for this set. Just remember, if the target is given indestructible before the damage happens, it is not technically destroyed and thus would not be exiled. I'm not going to sweat it though, I still see this as the best red uncommon and you're happy to play as many copies of this as you can get. Alright, moving on to green. At common, I'm putting Crushing Canopy at number 3. It's an instant for 2 and a green that lets you destroy either an enchantment or a creature with flying. Green decks often struggle with flying, and there won't be many games that this spell doesn't have a target. The fact that it deals with one of the biggest threats that either Golgari or Selesnya are going to face, I think is well worth the risk of it being stuck in your hand. There is a lot of flying in this set, so I'm putting it as the number 3 best green common. At number 2 we have Prey Upon. This is a solid green card, which at sorcery speed only costs you 1 green mana and has your creature fight a creature you don't control. In green, your creatures are typically bigger, so this shouldn't be too hard to find solid targets for but instant speed removal will cause you some issues. I still think that's well worth the risk. It's a solid card for Selesnya or Golgari at only one green mana. That's why it's the number two best green common. And our best green common is Siege Worm. It is expensive for five and two green, you get a five five trampler, but this has Convoke, so you can easily get this five five trampler on the board, say turn five, maybe even earlier. I really like Trample Unlimited, and this card was good before when it was printed. It's still good now. Number one best green common, Siege Worm. Moving on to the best green uncommons, I'll be honest here and say that this part I had the hardest time with. There are a lot of plays that in some instances really aren't going to provide you much value or don't do anything special, and others that are going to win you the game. So here I'm picking the cards that I think will always provide you solid value. And I'm going to start with an honorable mention for Might of the Masses. It's one green mana at instant speed that gives target creature plus one plus one for each creature you control. So you've gone wide, you attack with everything, and if even one creature gets through, this can pump that creature up, turning a 1-1 token into something huge, or giving that creature with Trample a boost to help you close out the game. In the number 3 spot, we have Crawl Harpooner. For 1 and a green, it's a 3-2 creature that has reach, and those stats alone are solid, but when it enters the battlefield, it has undergrowth, it gets a pump, plus x plus 0 for each creature, and it can fight a target creature your opponent controls. So sometimes it's going to be good just as an intimidating blocker, in other instances you may want to just trade it off with their pesky flying creature, and sometimes you're going to get a lot of bonus value from it because you get to play it, take out a one power flying creature your opponent has, and then keep it there for all the other flyers they have on their side of the board. Either way, a card with reach is going to be solid for green, and I think this one is no exception. I've got it as the number 3 best green uncommon. In the number 2 spot, I have Affectionate Indric. For 5 and a green, you get a 4-4 creature. 
and when it enters the battlefield, it also fights a creature. Sometimes it's just trading, and that's worth stabilizing against some evasive or monster annoying creature, but this is a much bigger body than Crawl Harpooner, and it also doesn't have to target a flyer, it can target any creature on your opponent's side of the board, and with it being bigger, means it will hopefully survive that engagement. I like this card, and I have it as the second best green uncommon. Now for the number one best green uncommon, I'm actually going to combo it up for two cards. We're going to go with Circuitous Route and District Guide. They're both mana fixing, make sure you get the land out you want type cards. Circuitous Route is for three and a green at sorcery speed. You get two, yes, two basic land or gates put onto the battlefield tapped. District Guide is for two and a green. You get a two, two creature that also gets you a basic land or gate into your hand. Both are solid plays. Both are really going to be strong and limited, and that's why I put them collectively as the best green uncommons. Moving on to gold cards, which there are a lot of, and I figure the easiest way is to just go through and just shout out the best common and uncommon for each guild, so we're going to go in alphabetical order, starting with Boros. For Boros, we have Sky Knight Legionnaire, which is one, a red, and a white. It gets you a 2-2 flying haste creature. It was a good creature before, it's a good creature today. This card ruined our perfect 2 at a giant record, which I was really sad about when they played two of these things, and they got plus one plus one counters on them. This card's just great, because it's fairly easy to mentor once or twice, it's an ideal Boros card, and certainly one you're happy to play multiple copies of. So enjoy your Sky Knight Legionnaires, Boros Drafters, I'm sure you're going to close out many a games with this flyer. Demir has Artful Takedown, and this card is just dumb. For two and a blue and a black, you get to not only tap a creature at instant speed, but also give another creature minus two minus four. Yeah, that's just dumb removal control. You want every copy of this you can get, just, yeah, good for you, Demir, and your OP cards. Big fan. Not. Golgari decks will be happy with Undercity Uprising for two, a black, and a green. It gives all your creatures death touch, and then a creature you control fights a creature you don't control. So basically, it's awesome removal, and it allows all of your creatures to attack safely, knowing that at the very least they're going to trade with whatever blocks it. Izzet gets a reprint in the form of Goblin Electromancer. It's a 2-2 for a red and blue, and it makes all of your sorcery and instant spells cost one less, including jumpstart spells. So yeah, this is the ideal Izzet card. It'll provide you a ton of value, and I think the clear best common for the guild. Selesnya has probably the least exciting gold commons, but one solid card is Sumala Woodshaper. For two, a white and a green, you get a 2-1 creature, but when it enters the battlefield, you get to look at the top four cards reveal a creature or enchantment card, and put that into your hand. So a card that replaces itself is always solid and limited, and I think is going to be a really good play for Selesnya at the common spot. Now the five best uncommons we got for Boros. I actually really want it to be True Fire Captain, which is two red and two white. You get a 4-3 with Mentor that also reads, whenever it is dealt damage, it deals that much damage to target player. So basically your opponent has to take this out, and it's going to cost them some health, but you can even play around with some shenanigans about shooting it yourself for the win. It'll easily mentor other creatures, but it's just not quite as good as the split card that Boros has. And that card is Integrity or Intervention. Integrity costs one red or one white, and it's your basic instant plus two plus two to target creature pump spell. Intervention though, is for two and a red and a white, you get to bolt any target for three damage and gain yourself three life. That's just solid value, and the split card in general gives you so much flexibility with the option of value at all stages of the game that they will be tough to beat for that best uncommon spot. Demir has no problem beating it though, because it has a lot of amazing uncommons. But the best card, which is also my least favorite card in this entire set, is Night Vale Predator. For two blue and two black, you get an obnoxious 3-3 flying death touch hexproof creature. Yeah, flying, death touch, and hexproof. It's just my least favorite card in the set, by far, not because it's bad, but because it's too good. There's not a lot of answers for flying that have hexproof in this set. There just there just isn't. So if you don't draw the, what, maybe one or two creatures that could even trade with this thing, you're in rough shape. You know the Demir player has trickery in their hand waiting for you because they've surveilled 12 times by the time this thing's hit the board. The death touch means there's no long-term blockers for it. So you really just have to ignore it and hope to win the race, which isn't an easy task against Amir either. I've already lost to this card. I know I will lose more in the future to it. This card just seems over the top, obnoxious, and limited. Not unbeatable. It's definitely not unbeatable, but it's hard to overcome in many situations, and that's why it's the best Demir uncommon, you pesky Night Vale Predator. Golgari, their split card status or statue is their best uncommon. Status is one green or black, give target creature plus one plus one in death touch. And then their statue, which is just amazing, it's an instant speed spell that destroys target creature, enchantment, or artifact. That's just awesome and a really solid card all around for limited. 
But I will honorable mention Awkward Assassin, which is the 1 1 for 1, a black and a green. It has Death Touch, and it reads when it attacks, all creatures able to block it must do so. I love the flexibility that this offers and the fact that it can set up so many situations for you to find an angle to pull out a win. I think this card is great as well as being really fun to me, but I'm going to have to shout it out once again at the end of the video, so do stick around for that. Because if your opponent has it, I want to give you a little workaround that may work for you in a certain situation. Now with Is It I'm Torn, their split card, one side switches the creature's power and toughness, the other side lets you dig through your deck for a couple spells, that's fine. There's also Crackling Drake, which is two red and two blue, and it's a flyer-like Enigma Drake, but it also draws you a card when it enters the battlefield. But I don't think either of those cards are as good as League Guild Mage. League Guild Mage is a red and blue mana for a 2-2, but it has two abilities. One is pay three and a blue, you get to tap it and draw a card. Card draw just wins you the game in limited, and it's a very is it thing to do that they are very happy to do as often as they can. The fact that this card gives you the ability to do it potentially every turn is really nice. But then its other ability is for a red and X and tap it. The X has to equal the cost of a sorcery or instant you're casting, but you get to target that spell and copy that spell. This is great because it can soak up your excess mana, it gets to copy your spells, which is incredible value. So I'm gonna lock my answer in for League Guild Mage as the best is it uncommon. And then Selesnia has Conclave Cavalier, which is a cool name, and it's also two green and two white for a 4-4 Vigilant Creature, which is also pretty cool. Now what's even better is that when it dies, you get two, yes two, two twos with Vigilance. That's a lot of twos that can add up to fours, not the point, it's just an amazing value card because 4-4 four, four with Vigilance for four mana is solid. The fact that when it dies, you get four more power and four more toughness on the board in the form of two different creatures, which can also help you convoke other stuff out. It's just, there's so many possibilities for this in the Selesnia deck. They're going to be super happy to play as many copies of this as they can get. And I don't think the mana requirements are a drawback because of the guild gates. So overall, this is just a solid card and the artwork's pretty sweet too. Now we can move on to the artifacts and there's actually not too many artifacts in this set, but there are a few noteworthy ones. Gatekeeper Gargoyle is a 3-3 flyer for six mana and it enters the battlefield with a plus one, plus one counter on it for each gate you control. So in some decks, these could be the bombs for you crazy deck builders who are excited to go four or five colors and you want to get all the gates you can this card can just win you the game with whatever mana you have there to throw out and cast it and make it say a 5-5 a 6-6 flyer without too much trouble another creature you may be excited about is rampaging monument which is definitely playable in multiple guilds it enters the battlefield with three 1-1 one -one counters on it so it's basically a 3-3 colorless trampler for four mana which is solid value and limited but it gets another plus one plus one counter for every time you cast a multicolored spell, which isn't too hard in this format. So this is a solid artifact indeed that every guild can probably find benefit from. The lockets are all great. I think you're happy to play them in every guild deck simply because they can ramp, they fix your colors a bit, and then can ultimately be sacrificed to draw you a couple cards when you need more gas. Yeah, they're just really solid cards. And then there's this crazy card, Chamber Sentry, which costs X, and it enters the battlefield with a plus one plus one counter on it for each color of mana spent on it. The reason this card is so crazy though are its two other abilities. One is pay X and tap it, remove X 1-1 one, one counters from it, and then you deal X damage to any target. So any grindy game, this card's gonna be really nice because you can tap it and ping creatures, ping your opponent, but if it dies, its second ability is pay one of each color, so if you have all five mana available to you, you can return Chamber Sentry from your graveyard to your hand. So basically, every two turns, you have a five damage spell that can be a creature, that can ping something, that can ping your opponent. So this card loves a grindy game, it loves being in that situation where the board is all muddled up, and this is going to push through to get that win. I admire you if you play it, if you pull off a deck with it, definitely let me know, because I think this card seems super fun but it also takes a, little bit of, takes a little bit of finesse to make it work. So if you want to take that chance, go for it. Best of luck, Godspeed. And now to wrap up, I have a couple card combos and interactions I want to share with you. But first, I just have to say thanks for watching. It really does mean a lot. I'm going to end this video with a couple booster pack openings too, if you're interested in that. But let's just get to these two combos that you really should know about before you jump into a draft. One of these I saw because I thought I was about to lose to it on my MTGO pre-release, but my opponent just didn't see it. It involves Vigor Spore Worm, which is a 6-4 that costs 5 and a green, and it has when it enters the battlefield, it undergrowth and pumps a creature. That's not important. The important part is that it reads it can only be blocked by one creature, or can't be blocked by more than one creature. 
So combo it with Glaive of the Guild Pack, which pumps your creature for each gate you control and gives the equipped creature menace. If you put those two together, you now have an unblockable, probably pumped up, monstrously large creature. Definitely keep this in mind if you are playing green. And then speaking of unblockable creatures, this brings me to my other fun card interaction that involves Ocran Assassin, the creature that must be blocked when it attacks but also has Death Touch, and Passwall Adept. This happened at our pre-release, and my friend Caleb made a very clever play. His opponent had Ocran Assassin, which had Glaive of the Guild Pack equipped. My friend had five creatures on the board, all of which were about to die. The opponent goes to combat, attacks, and in response, my friend Caleb uses Passwall Adept to make his creature unblockable. So he just takes the damage to the face, which is fine because it saves all of his creatures, and then on the next turn, he made three of his creatures unblockable, spending nine mana, swinging for the win with exactly lethal, I thought it was a super clever play and one I definitely have to shout out because if you do end up in Demir or is it and you have Passwall Adept, this card can be a pretty clever workaround for something like an Ocran Assassin that's going to take out your creatures that you potentially just played or that you're going to have to block it with. And that's it. Thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, if you comment, if you subscribe, it genuinely means a lot. I just, I can't say it enough. I really do appreciate it. I wish you the best of luck in your drafts. Let me know how they go. I'm going to keep trying to post videos like I did last time, twice a week at least. I hope you'll come check those out. Again, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Peace. And we got two booster packs from our pre-release. We ended up going two and one in our two-headed giant, but only third and above got more than more than the two pity packs. And unfortunately, even though there's only one three-no team, we lost the tiebreakers to get more than two packs. So that's all right. Sometimes it's about quality over quantity. So let's just see what we end up with. Nice deadly visit. Some solid limited cards and under realm lich hey can't complain about a mythic no way josie you know what i mean probably i don't even know what i mean so how can you possibly know what i mean let's see what pack number two's got going dazzling lights does that mean there's gonna be a foil in this pack because we've been dazzled by the lights of it fresh faced recruit just sounds like such an aggressive card name doesn't it all right i like the split card I like another Boros card and Camaraderie, all right. Two Demir Guild Gates, but overall, two solid packs. Thank you all for watching. We'll see you on the next video. Peace.